Granville, come and sweep the front. This dust will need laying and all. Get some water and spritz, 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 spritz. Get some water and spritz, spritz, spritz. <coughs> Get some water and spritz, spritz, spritz. Oh, don't bother, I've done it myself. <laughs> I didn't ought to be stuck here. I want some adventure in my life. Like trekking through sun-drenched equatorial Africa. Well, and now's your chance, Granville. To fetch your cloth, you get on your camel, and start trekking across them vast deserts of glass with a bucket of soapy water. <laughs> it always rains when I clean my windows. Oh, no, not today it won't. It's going to be fine and bright. Didn't you hear the weather, 4 4 forecast? <laughs> The 4 4 4 cost, that's 3 4s are 12. <laughs> Don't you mean the weather 12 cast? Yeah, no. <laughs> supposed to run this business on my own while you lie out here with ladies on your leg. If you weren't so tight with your money, Arkwright, you'd buy this lad some proper steps. See, so falling off a stool. Do you realise there's lads of your age, Granville, shouting to your Geronimo and jumping out of aeroplanes? <laughs> oh, they're not wearing a penny, though, are they? <laughs> to go now and stick things in people. But if you come over later, I'll give you something for that bruise. Oh, this bruise. <laughs> Not you, Arkwright. You wouldn't have a bruise unless you bought a load wholesale. <laughs> oh, heck, she affects me powerfully, that woman. There's her something in the way she moves. Like a combine harvester going through a corn <laughs> I hope you haven't damaged any of this fruit. <laughs> yes, Gladys Emmanuel Granville is everything I've ever wanted in a woman. A huge chest and a backside like a school bus. <laughs> I have got no time for these modern women with no room in the boot. <laughs> And think that girls are more attractively wrapped than even bars of chocolate. Ah, oh, and they can both may make a mess of your pocket and all. <laughs> I like girls of all sizes. That's depraved, is that? Oh, it isn't. It just shows I'm very flexible in my taste. <laughs> Do you know, I think perhaps I ought to get a sexier cat. I think girls should be the shape and size to fit the special needs of the individual, you know. In your case, small, demure, and financially independent. <laughs> and in my case, rounded, muscular, and generating enough of body warmth to cut down the fuel cost in the bedroom. <laughs> There's only one thing that guides my choice in a particular girl. And that is, I'm grateful for anyone who doesn't laugh at me pinny. Uh, <laughs> if only the nurse had a more respectable job. Well, nursing's respectable. Well, you never know what they've had hold of, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll get some suede shoes. You know, I see her come out of there like a small, highly trained panzer division, and my heart lifts. <laughs> Every time I think about her, I feel as if I'm, I'm paddling barefoot through loose change. <laughs> I feel my toes curling around for freshly minted silver. <laughs> and then I see her get in that car and drive away and I realise where she's going. Off to manipulate strange men. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, look what I've done. Go <laughs> on, oh, I must catch the cardboard before it sets. <laughs> if I'm very careful, I might just repair the packet so nobody notices. 
But even in this day and age, there's nothing any mortal soul can do to mend a broken biscuit, you know. No, well, well what do you think? <laughs> I'm going to have to reduce it. Oh, twice. <laughs> Mrs. Braddock. Oh, in a new coat. You like it? Oh, it's very beautiful. Of course. What it needs is a handbag to match. Yes, yes, I see what you mean, yes. Yes, get rid of this old thing. Well, you always did have a bit, a bit of taste, Mrs. Braddock. Well, it's not every man that appreciates it, Mr. Arkwright. Well, when you're running a business like this, man, making a success of it, you have to have a bit of flair, you know. Oh, and you have been successful, Mr. Arkwright. Mm -hmm. You've got a very sound little business here. Ah, well, it's not been easy. No, but you've struggled and won. Well, I, I like to think so, yes. Well, there's no doubt about it. Well, it's very nice of you to say so, <laughs> Mrs. Braddock. Can you cash me a cheque? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, you know, the, the, the more I, I look at that bag, you know, Mrs. Braddock, the, the nicer I think it looks. I mean, you, you don't get bags like that nowadays, do you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Detachable handles and everything like that. <laughs> It's awful, Mr. Arkwright. The bottom's falling out of well, it. Oh, it's, it's just like the grocery business, Mrs. Braddock. <laughs> I mean, we got all this very VAT, you know, and I, and I have to spend oh so much money on, on Granville's clothes. He's a very difficult age at the, at the moment, you know. I've never seen him in anything but that old cap and apron. Oh, well, he, he, he spends a fortune on handmade underwear, you see. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe the, the places he's got his initials sewn on. <laughs> now, uh, how, how much uh, were you dreaming, uh, were you thinking of, Mrs. Braddock? <laughs> Ten pounds. Ten pounds. Oh. Five. Five. Well, uh, uh, how's uh, Mr. Braddock? Is he, is he quite well, is he? Oh, he's fine. Oh, a regular uh, medical checkups and all that. I mean, he's, he's working hard and bringing in the. Uh, is oh, he? yes, he's working all the time. I hardly ever see him. Oh, well, uh, uh, all right then. Uh, five pounds. Oh, dear. You know, sometimes I lie in bed awake at night, and on a clear night, I swear I can hear the sound of the smaller businesses collapsing. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Arkwright. <laughs> I'll pop it in here before you wear it out. <laughs> well, have a nice day, Mr. Arkwright. <laughs> Thank you again. Oh, my, my pleasure, Mrs. Bouncer. Her Braddock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've gone pale. Aren't you feeling well? Oh, I'm all right. It's, it's, it's just the wear and tear of self-employment. Oh, did you want me to fetch the nurse over to have a look at you? No, she wouldn't come up. Hey, would she? Would she? She might, you know. She might come over. I mean, that's, that's her job, isn't it, eh? For visiting the sick. <laughs> You're looking better already. No, <laughs> I'm not fully. I just thought I might practice a little, uh, little harmless self-deception, eh? I shouldn't bother. You know it never works. Well, that's right. But, but be encouraging. Well, none of your evil little schemes ever come to anything. 
Anyway, she'll never believe you're poorly. She knows that you never entertain anything that hasn't got a profit in it. I hope to practice a little deception by preparing myself with a, with a little medical study. Anything to get the chance of being clasped tenderly and then drawn with a bit of luck in the general direction of that regal bosom. Oh, there's a papilla for a man. <laughs> oh, I can hardly rest me your cheeks on that and be comforted right down to the rare roots of me bare boots. <laughs> It's big by modern standards. Oh, you can uh, keep your modern standards. You try and rest for comfort on a couple of them, you finish up with a perforated eardrums. <laughs> Go and fetch that old, old medical book. You remember the one? Go and oh, get uh, it out. <laughs> now then, oh dear. Now, well, what can I possibly charge for them? Oh. <coughs> oh, God. <laughs> What's up with you? You're a bundle of nerves. Oh, you've been finally noticed, have you? I've noticed your prices don't get any better. Now, don't you start. I've just had Mrs. Bebraddock in here. She come in here, bought nothing, and went out with five pounds change. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken me all my time to break even. I don't know why you don't pack it all in and buy a little cottage somewhere. Hey, that, that's a good idea. Yeah, tell you what, I could buy yours and you could forget to move out, couldn't you? <laughs> eh? I'd treat you well, I promise you. Yes, it's a tempting offer. You must have a tidy little something tucked away, I bet. Oh, I have, I have, and it's all yours. <laughs> oh, yes, all yours, and, and me money as well, if you like. I can just see myself. You'd have me working in this shop all the hours God sent, and a few more besides. No, you would live like a queen. Yes, and you know how many hours she puts in a week. <laughs> no, if I married you, I should have to be sure you retired early. Oh, I would, I would, sir. Straight after the nine o'clock news. <laughs> I... I want to give you the key to my heart. I know what you want to give me. But for the moment, I'll settle for a large packet of detergent. Oh, all right. <laughs> what are you walking like that for? Oh, isn't it nothing? Uh, I find if I uh, uh, grit my teeth and keep my knees together, I can just about cope with it. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm not sure, really. It's more of a premonition of something coming on, you know what I mean? <laughs> here, there's dozens of diseases in here you could choose. Get from. out! <laughs> your temper's not improved. How long can you go on to smiling through your pain? Where does it hurt? Put your hand here. <laughs> not till you've seen your own doctor. These fingers are strictly for medicinal purposes. Listen, your national health, you know, I pay my stamps. Least you can do is go come over and mark me card. You know what you need, Arkwright? What? An operation. An, op an operation? <laughs> to relieve you of that big lump in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm looking for is a nice little illness that will strike me down just after we close. <laughs> Something that calls for a, a nice bit of fire and a, a low light in the living room. Shall you be going out tonight at all? Yes, as soon as we close. Nine o'clock. Yeah? Dancing the night away, eh? Don't forget I shut up sharp at 10.15, will you? A whole hour and a quarter of the Dolce Vita. Do you think I'm ready for such freedom? Well, I want you to go out and enjoy yourself, Granville. Mm. I saw that Linda Mulgrave this morning. She's at art school now. Oh, I bet she's a raver. Yeah, well, you're only here young once. You gather your rosebuds while you may. Yeah. Trouble is, by the time I get out, there's no left but thorns. <laughs> Even then, I've a hell of a job to get close enough to get scratched. <laughs> oh, dear, I, I wouldn't want to have that, would you? Yeah, you wouldn't know where to lay it for comfort, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I should have gone to art school, you know, grown a beard, become a swinger with a further educational circle. You see, she's a very cautious woman, but if I found a nice, cosy little disease with the right symptoms, I, I reckon she'd come across the road anyway. <laughs> well, go, go on, then. Oh, heck. <laughs> it's Linda, isn't it? Chapel Road Youth Club. <laughs> Have you any glue? <laughs> I like it, I like it. <laughs> ha, 
How's that for openers after all these years, eh? Have you any glue? <laughs> You're a scream, you lot. Is anything for a giggle in your crowd, eh? I wish I were among it. <laughs> How do you like it? Sticky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the glue, the glue. You see, you see. There you, there you go again. <laughs> oh, I wish, I wish I could churn out all that sophisticated patter. <laughs> Aye. Still, we had a lot of laughs, though, didn't we? With the, with the. Uh... <laughs> How's your mother? <laughs> Halfway up a step ladder, waiting for this glue. Glue, glue. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I think it's in the basement, madam. Would you mind waiting for a moment? <laughs> glue. <laughs> glue. <laughs> you don't remember me, do you? Should I? It's Granville. <laughs> I only do this for the money, you know. It's not the it's not the essential me. You know, up in the privacy of my own room, it's it's all great literature and the fifty favourite masterpieces of great art. Mm. Yes, I uh, I'm free at nine. You know, perhaps we could take a walk down the canal. You know, have a natter about the brushwork of Leonardo. Mm. I'm going to the wrestling. Oh. <laughs> well, well, why don't you call, call in on the way back, you know, and I've, I've made some fresh fruit pie. I've just baked. I, I, I'm not always in boots. I'm, I'm going to get some suede shoes. <laughs> oh. Oh, wait, Ooh, I'll be good. Eh? No, all right, I'll go, I'll go. I want to get a, get a second opinion on this. <laughs> no, man, no, man, you're just the chap I'm looking at. wonder if that Linda Mulgrave needs a model. <laughs> Someone small but perfectly proportioned. <laughs> and he's cat and bicycle clips. <laughs> Can't see out. No, you, you really need one of them uh, uh, light strapped to your head, don't you? I tell you what, uh, do you think you'd be able to see better if I gave you a torch? Well, I should think so, if I knew what I was looking for. Well, it's inflammation of the special skin which covers the eye. Well, it looks all right. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> eyeballs, eyeballs. Let me finish talking with you. <laughs> It's too much responsibility for me, Mr. Arkwright. I only come in for some tinned carrots. Oh, dear. They're good for your eyes. Yes, yes, all they tell me, yeah. You never see rabbits wearing glasses, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Present company accepted, of course. <laughs> now then, would you mind uh, looking in my eye with that torch when I lift my lid up? Come on. Oh, no, I can't stop. I've got two eggs on boil. Oh, dear. You're not the stuff that surgeons are made of, are you, Norman? I've castrated pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I've, I've got some ointment for that somewhere. I mean. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just the carrots and the torch, is it, Norman? Uh, no, I don't want the torch. Oh, well, if you have any complaints, of course we will exchange it. <laughs> <laughs> for another torch, I mean. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps you'd rather have a yellow one, would you? No, I think blue is the in colour this year. Ta-ta. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, that damn spring clip. If that gets any more vicious, I'll have to take that round the vets and have it put down. <laughs> oh. Let's hope my pastry rises. My wages never do. <laughs> hey, have you got a th th thermometer? Oh. I, I think I've got a, a touch of page 42. <laughs> You're not there, look, on the wall, look. Nice and in the old good to me. I can't get my mouth round that. Well, that's all we got, and there's no need to be so modest. You could get three of those in there. <laughs> Stuck on the wall, you silly devil. <laughs> Grandville, fetch your cloth, will you? 
Well, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I can't pronounce it. Look. <laughs> and if you've got it, you don't get the time to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> don't beggar about. Come on. <laughs> you can't have got that. You'd be dead. <laughs> Much quieter altogether. <laughs> Listen, I was reading in the paper yesterday headlines of small shopkeepers in danger of extinction. So there. Oh. <laughs> well, what have you been doing with this cloth? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. I better go and wash this out. Yeah, but what's been on it? Never you mind, you've got enough to worry about. <laughs> Yes, it was uh, just going under for the third time. There it is. <laughs> It'll do. <laughs> Did you see that, Granville? I'm uh, Mrs. Ellis, the bread strangler. <laughs> Terrible what that creature does to a slice loaf, you know. She orders one every day. She can't wait to get her hands on it. As soon as you hand it over, she's on it, clawing and bashing and thumping it. Okay, God knows what she does with it when she gets it home. You left the money on the counter. I bet you can't move in her house for mutilated bread. Has so he left the money on the counter? You don't get obsessed with money, Granville. The only thing that matters is your uh, health. Now, just feel me pulse, will you? No, oh, hold on. Hey, it's not moved, this. Well, of course not. Give it time. It doesn't go racing up and down the scale. It's not on a bit of elastic. Now then, give us your hand. Right. <clears throat> One, two. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh. <laughs> is, the, uh, is the proprietor in? Well, he's hung up at the moment. Oh. Well, I represent the Matlock Mutual Protection Society, so perhaps you could just give him my card and tell him that I have something of enormous advantage to him. There's a gentleman here, says oh, he's... Oh, what, what, uh, what? <laughs> Says he doesn't want any. Oh. Uh, but has he heard about our, our gilt-edged centenary offer? Have you heard about the gilt-edged centenary? Oh, centen what, 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 Oh, I've had it all day, all day long. It started with the widow. There she was, poor woman. She was holding the hand of her little child too. And there it is, looking up at me with big, staring, trusted eyes. And all the time I'm trying to talk its mother into parting with her widow's might. Oh. And now, this, this poor, poor creature. Well, I've had it, I'll tell you, I've had it, I've had it up to here. You're the last poor soul I ever try and talk into parting with his money on the strength of an offer of a, a rubber mat with your name on it for the shop door. What size? <laughs> You're not poorly. You saw what that thermometer said. Never went any higher than wet and windy. <laughs> I know that, and yeah, you know that, but Nurse Gladys Emanuel doesn't have to know it, does she? I want her to come up here and uh, discover it for herself, don't I? Along with a few other little surprises I've got up my sleeve. <laughs> up your sleeve, don't forget you've still got your pyjamas on. <laughs> I'm not likely to with her for floating about, am I? Hey, put that main light off and let's see the effect of the table lamp. Oh, yes, and that's, that's better, isn't it? That's sort of romantic, but sombre. You know, it makes me look sort of poetic, but, but consumptive, you know what I mean? <laughs> you see, the effect I'm trying to achieve is that I'm, I'm a poorly but attractive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but perhaps you're right, I'd better have the light out altogether, I think. <laughs> Listen, uh, go and see if she's come back yet. No, a car's not there. Oh, it's typical, isn't it? Typical. She gallops round the town for the comfort of strangers, doesn't she? Well, she'd be delivering babies. Oh, I know. Well, they can't afford to send them by post anymore, can they? <laughs> Listen, hey, just a minute. Come here. Come and see if this record player is working, will you? I don't want to miss out on the mood music, do I? 
What's this? A 78? What happened to that LP you were promising to buy? Well, I tried. I went down to get the latest angle, but 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 angle, Your polish. <laughs> oh, it's a scented furniture polish. <laughs> I, I should have done my legs as well. <laughs> no, <then. laughs> Don't worry about me, the poor invalid up here. Hey, what's going on? He slipped and cracked his head on the stairs. Oh, it's these suede shoes. I can't steer them like boots. <laughs> <laughs> Seem to go in opposite directions. I think they must have come from different herds. <laughs> Can you hear me? He'll be all right. I'll just pop him up to the outpatients to make sure. Listen, Granville, before she takes you away, listen to me. Are you listening? Uh, Mrs Ellis left some money on the counter. Did you put it in the till? <laughs> Are you listening? Did you put it in the till? Get out of the way. I can't bear it when relatives break down. <laughs> Do you think you can make it to the car, love? Yes, I can walk. I think I can walk. Just I don't think I've got suede-type feet. Well, thanks very much, Nurse Gladys, for coming over. I've enjoyed our visit. We, we must do it more often. Don't clutter the place up. Make yourself useful. I int intended to make myself useful, didn't I? <laughs> I was hoping that you and me would get together for a little course of treatment. Don't bother me now. We'll talk about it later. Provided, of course, you're properly dressed. Oh, well, that's a, a little ray of hope anyway. Uh, listen, uh, before you take him away, I'll just get him something to nibble in case they keep him in. They won't keep him in. Well, you, you never know, do you? I mean, uh, the least we can do is give someone... I mean, if we can't give our own rel... 43p. <laughs> Granville? That good Granville, you might know he'd fall on his feet, or on this particular occasion, on his head. <laughs> I trust him. Well, mind you, I think I can trust him with her. That's one of the advantages of a sh sheltered upbringing. You haven't got the know-how to muscle in on your uncle's territory. <laughs> oh, and well, what territory? Them lovely rolling acres. <laughs> Part of the national heritage is gay Gladys Emmanuel. Oh God, don't let the socialist and the nationaliser. 